Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we want to thank you again for this fellowship. We are gathered in your name. This morning, Lord, we are here to celebrate you. We're here to worship. We're here to adore you. But more precisely, we are here to celebrate you. We are here to acknowledge you as our God, as our Lord. We are here to acknowledge you as our enabler, as the only help that we have. Lord God Almighty, we ask that this morning you will teach us yourself. Prophet says, we shall be taught by God. Father, in Healing Wings Chapel of Faith, we have no pastor. We have no teacher. We have interactive sessions because only you. You are the only pastor that we have. You are the only teacher that we have. And so Lord God Almighty, we invite you today. Come and teach us your ways. Come and instruct us by your spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. So that in everything, your name and your name alone, O oh God, will be glorified and we will receive the blessing that is sufficient unto today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. There are some messages that God gives me on the spur of the moment. I will explain as I go on. There are some that take longer. This one has been marinating since Monday when we had the practical Christianity. And the title is No Confidence in the flesh. The people of God, we have no confidence in the flesh. It means we don't trust in the flesh. We don't believe in the flesh. We don't rely on the flesh. We don't depend on the flesh. We don't glory in the flesh. Everything now is in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. I asked on Monday, some people, I said, well, how offensive are you? And I asked the question, because you are my witnesses in Healing Wings that I am a very offensive fellow. <laughs> uh, some people attacked me on, the, on, on my Twitter page, or I think it was Facebook. And I said, you know, so what, I'm, I'm offensive. Jesus was offensive. I must also, it was a rock of offense. So I must also be offensive. I have to be like my savior, I'm striving to be like him. So I asked on Monday, how offensive are you? And the people that answered didn't find themselves offensive at all. People answered and justified themselves. Well, I don't think I'm offensive at all. No, I'm not, you know. And so I, I asked uh, people to testify about other people. Uh, is this person actually offensive or not? And of course, a lot of diplomacy came on. Uh, you know, I mean, people said, no, 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 no. I don't think, I don't think, uh, uh, I don't think he's offensive. He's not you know, offensive at all. I mean, she's a nice person. She's a, you know. So I, I asked another question. I said, is it easier to give someone all the money in your bank or to forgive? The person that offends you, his or her sins. And someone says, oh, no, no, it is easier to forgive because we are now a people who forgive. Then I asked another person, I said, do you forgive others even when you don't want to? 
and someone said, of course, you know, in fact, uh, everybody knows me. People can testify that, you know, I don't keep malice. I have no qualms. I forgive everybody that offends me. And then I asked, I said, well, some other people, I said, you always tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And some people told me, oh, yes, I always tell the truth. And the truth of the matter is that all these people are highly mistaken. <laughs> the biggest mistake, of course, is the ones that say they always tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, because in that very saying, they are really not saying the truth. And by the next morning, God had waylaid somebody and he phoned me and said, look, Lee, I want to retract that thing because this morning I tell, told something that was not, that was a white lie. It was, uh, I said, well, this is what God does. He waylays us. And Jesus says, the children of this world, they are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And so it's, I started thinking, I said, Lord, it looks like this statement has wider ramifications than I even imagined before, because the children of this world say to err uh, is human and to forgive is divine. But when we have interactive sessions in Healing Wings, Healing Wings people tell me the opposite. They said, uh, forgive is human. I say, well, how did we, how did we get to this? Because so saying, we despise the grace of God, the grace of God, and we, we despise the power of the redemption of Christ. So let us start by looking at the scripture, Matthew 9, 10. Matthew 9, 10. I will explain to you the relevance of it. It might not, it might not seem apparent initially. Matthew 9, 10. I'm going to read it uh, all the way to verse... 13. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. When the disciples, when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so you will understand the sequencing. Last week, we talked about mercy, rejoicing, over judgment. But today, we need to learn what it means that Jesus says he requires mercy and not sacrifice. Let me start by saying that, you know, I mean, for years when I read the scripture that I just read, I simply assumed that there were righteous people said, I did not come for the righteous, but for sinners. So I said, well, he wasn't bothering with the righteous. He was only concentrating on the, on the, on the, on the sinners. And uh, if you read the Old Testament, there are so many righteous people in the Old Testament. Uh, and that led me to a statement. Said, I said, to get something right, we need first and foremost to make mistakes. Let me repeat it. That which I have learned. To get something right, we need first and foremost to make mistakes. Sometimes we need first and foremost to make a lot of mistakes because mistakes 
are sometimes the best teachers. But the scripture that says your iniquities will correct you, in which case sometimes God needs to allow us to fall, as happened with Adam. God needs to allow us to fall, to sin, because the correction is going to come from the consequences of our sin, we will learn. There are so many things we cannot learn theoretically. Huh? The school of the Holy Spirit is never theoretical. It does not teach you something that is just theory. No, it's going to throw you into the fire because if you just learn that the fire will not burn you, you will just learn it, you will not believe it. Until you are thrown in the fire and you are not burnt, then. Or until you are thrown into the fire and you are burnt, then you will learn not to go into the fire. So I said, I've been corrected. I've learned a lot from mistakes that I have made in my attitude to the word of God. And one of the mistakes has to do with the issue of righteousness. I did not understand that righteousness in the scriptures are dispensational. I've thought about this before, just telling you again. Righteousness in the scriptures are dispensational. But even the dispensational righteousness often turned out to be questionable. Huh? Now look at some examples. God decided to destroy all humanity in a flood, but he found one man, Noah. Huh? Noah received grace in the sight of the Lord. Was Noah righteous? No, because after the flood, Noah was a drunkard. Hmm? Where was his righteousness? Abraham is a father of faith. It's not the father of righteousness. Huh? The Bible says he believed God, but God converted his righteousness as a foreign exchange, his faith into righteousness as a foreign exchange. Huh? Was he righteous? Not really. He lied. He slept with his house help. The righteousness of Abraham is questionable. What about righteous Lot? Jesus called Lot, righteous Lot. Well, righteous Lot was delivered from Sodom, but he ended up sleeping with his daughters and bearing children by them. What about the righteousness of David? David, righteous? No way. In fact, David was a problem for me because I went and did an extensive study of David. And maybe one day I will present it again. And I discovered that he was a despicable human being. I mean, you know, I mean, I just found so many things wrong with David. According to the scriptures, there were so many things that he did that in my year, year righteousness, I condemned. Hmm? But David had a heart for God. Okay? Part of the unrighteousness of David was that, well, where you slept with another man's wife and had him killed. Say, why can that person be righteous? You know, his righteousness cannot be from his works. Huh? The same, we have to understand that was righteousness in the law. We had to, to obey certain laws. In fact, at one juncture, Paul told us that pertaining to the righteousness of the law, he was blameless. But the same Paul makes us understand that the righteousness of the law is not the righteousness of God. The righteousness of the Lord, of, of God, is the righteousness of Christ. And no human being was righteous or is righteous the way Christ was, the way Christ is. Jesus was sinless. So let's start this journey by asking the question, who are the righteous?
And to answer the question, I say, in the mouth of 12 witnesses, I want to establish to you, without any doubt, Jesus says, the matter of two or three witnesses, everything is established. I'm going to use 12 because I'm going to do an overkill. I want to establish to you this morning, without any iota of a doubt, that there is nobody, nobody that is righteous. Let us look at 12 scriptures among many that tell us righteousness does not exist for the man. It doesn't exist. So that we can, I can impress this in your mind and in your heart today. First Kings 8.46. There is no one who does not sin. There is no one who does not sin. So if there is no one who doesn't sin, then there is no one who is righteous. Job 15, 14 to 16. What is man that he could be pure? And he who is born of a woman that he could be righteous. If God puts no trust in his saints and the heavens are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is abominable and filthy and drinks iniquity like water. What number is that? That is the second one. Number three, Psalm 14, verse three. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Hmm? Let me translate the scripture with permission. We have all turned aside. We have all together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. That's number three. Let's go to number four. Psalm 130, verse three. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand to rhetorical question? Nobody. Nobody can stand, says the psalmist, hmm? because all have iniquities. Number five, Psalm 143, verse two. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight, no one living is righteous. No one living is righteous. Number six, Ecclesiastes 7.20. There is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. They don't exist. Number seven, Isaiah 6.5. Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Number eight. Isaiah 53 verse six. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Number nine. Isaiah 64 five. You are indeed angry. For we have sinned. In these ways, we continue and we need to be saved. Number 10, James 3 2. We all stumble in many things. We all stumble in many things. We all do, all of us. Number 11, 1 John 1 8. To nine. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Number 12 is more extensive. Romans 3, 9 to 18. What then? 
Are we better than they? Not at all. For we are previously charged, both Jews and Greeks, that they are all under sin, as it is written. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's number 12. Huh? So let us establish it definitively so that I don't have to come to it again next week, the week after, or whenever. There is none righteous. None. Absolutely none. Huh? Non righteous. Now, I know that in your case, you are born again. Nevertheless, I want you to know that all these scriptures that I have read still apply to you and to me because there are two nations, two peoples in you simultaneously at the same time. Huh? The person that we have just described and Christ. So don't assume that because you are born again, you are no longer wicked. The wickedness is going to be there and it will remain there until we meet Christ and without be exactly like him. Still going to be there. So that's why I came on Monday and asked some simple, you know, are you more righteous than Hitler? Are you a better person? Do you think you're a better person than Idi Amin? I mean, these were all designed to tease certain things out of us. Huh? Because it's important once we understand what the scriptures are telling us, it is important for us not to be surprised anymore at the sins of anybody. Don't be surprised if they tell you somebody raped his grandmother. Don't be surprised if they tell you somebody killed people and ate them. Don't be surprised. Whatever it is, just know that that is the problem of people in the flesh. And that is why we are to have no confidence in the flesh. Don't be disgusted at anybody's sin. If you are disgusted at the sin of anybody, you might get into trouble with your maker. Uh, Pray for the person. Ask God to show mercy to the person. But don't get into the any inclination that you are holier than the person. Don't presume, assume that you are better than the person. That's why I tell stories about different ways by which God has flogged me, has beaten me. I used to be, to, to be, to be upset at people, men, being in the streets. You see them, they will stand somewhere and they will, they will pee. And I say, oh, you, oh, these people don't even have any common decency. What is, what is the meaning of this? Huh? Well, in London, every 100 meters, you might find a toilet. It doesn't exist in Nigeria. 
I was disgusted, disgusted, disgusted until I went to Alaba once and I felt pressed. And I wasn't pressed just to pee, I was pressed to do the big one. And I was in trouble. Okay, because if the mercy of God was not extended to me, I, I would have just messed myself up there. And I had to start begging God. I was running from shop to shop in Alaba and begging them, please, do you have a toilet? Do you have a toilet? Do you have a toilet? At the same time, I was pleading with God. Hmm? I was pleading with God. So I want you to know that there is no sin that you cannot commit. I want you to know that there is no sin that I cannot commit. But for the sake of, for the grace of God. Uh, Bible talks about when he who lets is taken out of the way, the person who is, restrains us, the person who withholds us, the person who upholds us is Christ. Let us never, ever forget it. Let us never, ever forget it. Not only that, let us understand the kingdom dynamics of this situation, because really, that is what God teaches us in healing wings. Kingdom dynamics does not follow common sense. Don't lean on your own understanding. Kingdom dynamics does not follow logical sense. The terrible sinners are the best ones for God. The worst sinners are the best candidates to become the best disciples. That is why Paul often says, Christ has come to save sinners of which he is the worst. And he is the worst. And you are the worst. And I am the worst. Because if we are not the worst, we would not love him as much. Huh? Jesus said about that woman that came, crashed the dinner party and started kissing his feet. Huh? She loves much because she has been forgiven much. Why has she been forgiven much? Because her sins are much. People who do not think their sins are much are not forgiven much and they love little. And you don't want to love little. I know, I know that you don't want to love little. So don't allow a holier than thou attitude. Even if it is just a little bit of it that is still there. That is telling you that well, I don't tell any lies anymore, that I'm not offensive to anybody anymore, that I'm, I can't forgive anybody that upsets me. I said, you can't forgive, huh? <laughs> what if, what if they kidnap your son? Uh, I mean, you know, that, what if, well, I don't even want to call the what if because I don't want God to use my mouth to, to, to fulfill any, any bad thing. Hmm? So let's look at Philippians 3.3. 3. Philippians 3.3, 3, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also, says Paul, might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm also circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ, yet indeed, 
I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead from the dead. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected. Please, we are not already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, we rejoice in Christ Jesus. And we have no confidence, absolutely no confidence whatsoever in the flesh. We don't have any confidence in the flesh. What is the flesh? The flesh is anything and everything that is contrary or outside of the spiritual oneness which we have received with Christ. Hmm? Jesus says, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The two are separate and distinct. They are like the east to the west. So to have confidence in the flesh is to believe in anything that has to do with us. We can no longer say, I can't do this. I, can, I, cannot, I cannot commit this sin again. We can no longer say, I can forgive everybody. It's a lie. We can no longer say, I, I, I always tell the truth. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Look, a lot of my, 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 my talk today is going to be based on my testimonies. The book I've just written says living the gospel because I discovered that the gospel has been written into my life. I've discovered that everything that has been written about me must be fulfilled. And so I want you to know that my flesh has been very good to me. Good, quote unquote. Because I was born into a prominent family in Ibadan. My family is a member of the royal family in Ibadan. My great uncle, Kapale Kutedu, was the fit in line to the throne of the Ulubado. My old man was the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources of the old Western region of Nigeria. And this was at a time when cocoa was the mainstay of the economy. He was in charge of cocoa from Lagos to Eloni. He later became the director of agricultural services at the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, of the United Nations. As a result, I became what was called a UN child. 
I was the only one because my parents carried me in their suitcase wherever they went. My school fees were paid by the United Nations. I was in school with a boy that whose father was the richest man in the world. Just give you an idea of the type of school. Later on, <laughs> he was kidnapped. Uh, and they had to pay, pay a huge ransom to get him back. Uh, I went to school in the year countries, Italy, France, Britain, United States. At the age of 34, I became a special advisor to the Minister of External Affairs of Nigeria. I traveled to 54 year, year countries in 18 months. We were, a lot of these, we were flying in our own plane. Uh, we are not taking commercial. Uh, at the age of 36, I was offered the job of Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. I didn't take the offer, but Babangida offered it to me. Uh, at the age of 39, I was offered the job of special assistant to Olusha Gumabasojo. He was running for Secretary General of the United Nations. I rejected the offer. At the age of 36, I established Video Mart, which quickly became the biggest video rental outfit in Nigeria. Hmm? I became wealthy by my own definition. I was traveling above, ab abroad to year, year countries every three months. And then at the age of 41, I met Christ. And when I met Christ, he asked me to lay down my life. He asked me to lay down everything that I had built. That's why I came to you some days ago and I told you about hostile takeover. Huh? One big fight. We're still fighting. <laughs> the struggle, the struggle. You know, at one point, the Lord told me, take a piece of paper, draw a line up like this. He said, This is this part is the one that you are surrendered. But I'm telling you that I'm taking everything. Everything. I'm taking everything. Huh? He asked me to deny myself to believe that I know longer exist. I no longer exist. My brother, my sister, you cannot deny yourself according to the prescriptions of Jesus. The prescriptions that he gives for his discipleship. And at the same time, ascribe any merit to yourself. It's not possible. That's what I have come to impress on you today. If you do anything right, it is Christ that did it. Hmm? Because he's the one that is at work in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. If you do anything wrong, it's not even you because you no longer exist. It is just the sin that is in your flesh that is committing the sin. You are no longer part of the equation. Hmm? The man in Christ can no longer take credit for anything. It's terrible, isn't it? Can't take credit for anything. Because you cannot claim the righteousness of Christ and at the same time ascribe some righteousness to us. No, we didn't have any righteousness of our own. The righteousness of Christ has simply been ascribed to us. It's like being married to a husband 
and you take his name and you inherit everything that he has. Huh? And the contradiction was the problem of Israel. Paul said they had zeal without knowledge. Let's look at Romans 10, 2. Romans 10, 2. Remember, when I'm telling you all this, it's not as if I have cornered it to, but I'm, I'm telling you what I know, because sometimes what you know has not been made flesh in you yet. Romans 10, 2. Still hasn't opened. In fact, let's, let's look at it from, from 10, 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but accord, not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. A member of Healing Wings translated this scripture for me. Like, like 20 years ago. I've never forgotten it uh, because he made an impression on me. Later on, I met him and I asked him about it and he did not remember. I said, ah, so it was the Holy Spirit that was just using your mouth to speak. Hmm? Christ is the end of trying to be good. That's why Yemisi was, that was what Yemisi was trying to teach us on, uh, on Monday or Thursday. I said, do you try to be good? She said, no, I've given up. <laughs> Are you good? She said, no. You try to be good? She said, no. You have to give up because you try to be good. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Hmm? Is there anything about us that is redeemable? I've had this fight with God. I, I told God, you know, Give me something that I can take credit for. You can't take everything away from me. I mean, at least let me be, let, let, me, let, let, let me receive the glory for some little thing. No way. It's not going to happen. Is it that there is nothing redeemable about me? Nothing. Absolutely nothing is redeemable about me. Absolutely nothing about you is redeemable. God is never, ever, ever going to use anything about you. He's not going to use any skill that you have. Say you are a good guitarist, a good footballer. He's, he's, he's not going to use anything that has to do with you because everything that has to do with you is linked to your flesh. And the man that is in the flesh can never, ever, ever please God. You can never please God. That's why I give the analogy, I say, if, if God ever tells you to go and bring that bucket, go and carry that, that bucket of water, or he say, go and bring that sack of cement, hmm? don't waste your time telling me, that, telling him that, ah, that would be too heavy for me. Rubbish, because you are not the one who is going to carry it. Who told you? Because he told, he said, go and bring that uh, sack of cement. And you are the one going to carry it. No, the person who is going to carry it is the Christ that is in you. He's the one that is going to do the carrying. Hmm? The principle is called in Christendom, total depravity. That is man is totally depraved, natural man, totally depraved. There is nothing in natural man that is of any use to God. There is nothing in natural man that God is going to use for anything. Huh? So don't get carried away with it. You can use your natural talents to make money in the world. You can use your natural talent to advance in the world. You can never use your natural talents to advance in anything that has to do with the kingdom of God. 
You can never use your natural talents to advance in anything that has to do with God. It will not get you anywhere. Huh? So let's do some breakdowns so that we can understand it before I start giving you examples, the way that I have learned in difficult ways that I have learned and I'm still learning. Huh? Our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. We cannot know it. Jeremiah 17, 9. We don't know it. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. That's why God says, my son, give me your heart. If, when you give him his heart, your heart, what do you think he's going to do with it? He's going to throw it away. He's going to throw it in the dustbin. Because he wants to give you a completely new one. Huh? We were born dead in transgressions and sins. Psalm 51, verse 5. Psalm 58, verse 3. Ephesians 2, 1 to 5. We were dead in transgressions and sin. Hmm? It was in sin that our mothers conceived us. Hmm? We were held captive by a love of sin. John 3, 19. John 8, 34. We would not seek God. Romans 3.10. We were lovers of darkness. John 3.19. We did not understand the things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Therefore, we suppress the truth in righteousness. Romans 1.18. Well, and we lived willfully in sin. And the sinful lifestyle seemed right to us. Proverbs 14, 12. So we rejected the gospel of Christ. We called it foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1:18. Our mind was hostile towards God because it was not subject to the law of God, because it was basically unable to do so. Romans 8, 7. Huh? And even though I was using all these in the past tense, all those tendencies are still in us. They are still with us, but they are in us as outlaws. Huh? They are strangers in us, but they are still there. And God is removing them, little by little, precept upon precept, line upon line. We are being built up to be a spiritual house. Line upon line, he's building us up. Huh? He's building us up. We are not there yet. We will not get there until we are there with him. So, the flesh can't please God. God is not going to use anything that we have. He has no use for anything that belongs to us. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus because everybody has been condemned. <laughs> Understand what I'm telling you? Because the you has been condemned, has died with Christ. That's why there is no condemnation. The Bible says in Romans 8, 3, on account of sin, God condemned sin in the flesh. So don't talk about forgiveness is now natural to you. For we are. Huh? Telling the truth is now natural to you. How come? Is that in your nature? Stop lying to yourself. 
Righteousness is anathema to human nature. Man is a sinner by birth, is a sinner by nature, is a sinner by practice. Righteousness is 100% the work of God. Righteousness is 100% the work of God alone. Remember what I just read, Philippians 3, 9. And to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So we don't have any righteousness of our own. All our righteousnesses, Isaiah 64, 6, are filthy rags. So please, don't let us make a mistake. The righteousness that we claim now is imputed to us. It is not imparted to us. It is ascribed to us, but we don't have it yet. All that has happened is that our faith is converted to righteousness. God knows we cannot be righteous, but he knows we can have faith. Why can we have faith? Because he has given us faith. And he says, if we have faith in him, he is going to consider the faith that we have in him, in his son, Jesus Christ, to be our righteousness. He's going to convert it to righteousness. Hmm? So, we shall be righteous. We are not yet righteous. In the meantime, we are simply covered by the righteousness of Christ. In the meantime, we continue to sin. But when we ask for forgiveness, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. Uh, let's understand it within another system, okay? Now that we have received Christ, uh, we died with him, we are raised with him, we are no longer ourselves. We no longer exist. We are now members of the body of Christ. Uh, now, let, let, let's understand this, this situation now. A member of Christ a member of Christ's body is Christ. My hand belongs to me. So my hand is not supposed to do anything unless my brain, my head instructs it to do it. As I'm holding my hand now, it's because you know, my, 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 my head, my, my hand cannot now do something contrary to what I ask it to do. The head is Christ. We are simply members of his body. So all our instructions now come from the head, which is Christ. So let me give you some, 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 some testimony because as I said, hmm, what I am telling you now is something that I'm learning the hard way. It's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. If you have believed in yourself, and now they tell you that you know your, your belief is rubbish, it's, it's difficult to relinquish that person. But we have to relinquish it because we cannot save that person. If we try to save that person, we will lose that person. I thought I was being righteous. I decided to give 500,000 of what I consider to be my money as a round robin for people to borrow in healing winds. And so there was a queue of people that applied for the money. And somebody new now came and wanted the money. And some people told me that I should give her, and she should jump the queue 
the people that were before her. She should be given the loan before the people that were before her, that were already were even in employment before her. I said, no, it's not going to happen. You know, this doesn't conform to my principles. And Jesus said to me, one of the worst things that he has ever said to me, <clears throat> one of the most painful things that he has ever said to me, he said, Femi, huh? you have to decide whether you will follow your own principles or follow me. I was a very principled Christian before I knew Jesus. And I gloried in my principles because I felt that my principles were better than those of the, those people that, that considered themselves to be Christians. I didn't know that my principles were filthy rags. Two of these things, I've told you it before, but I'm bringing them up in a different context. Huh? God taught me to fast. I'd never fasted in 41 years. I asked him about fasting. He brought a woman to come and tell me about it. I thought, you know, but well, this woman is a Muslim. Why are you sending a Muslim to me? When I asked the Lord, the woman answered me. He said, I'm not a Muslim. Well, I'm just married to a Muslim. Lying is a Muslim. But sometimes I go to a mosque with him, but I'm a Christian. I said, hi. And so I started fasting. Huh? And fasting to me was so easy. It was easy for me to fast. I would go three days without food, without water, dry, spend time in the presence of God. It was easy for me. I didn't know that I wasn't the one that was, <laughs> I didn't know until my sister-in-law uh, came and said that, ah, she wanted to fast for one day and every time she tries it, she will put something in her mouth. And I just looked at her and said, ah, ah, look at this one. And these people, and these people have been, I mean, Christ, I mean they, they, they met God before me. And look at, look, look at the stage that she was in. Okay, I was in trouble. I couldn't fast again. I could not fast again. And then I, I, I realized that, <laughs> wait a minute. I wasn't fasting by my own strength before. It was the Lord that was helping me. I had to start begging him. I had to start begging him. I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. Huh? It took me a while to get back on the trail. And then I now realized, OK, OK. Huh? But the one about giving messages, like the one I'm giving to you now, I've even brought it to you in Healing Wings. You are my witnesses. I brought it to you in Healing Wings to tell me to, to help me to resolve some of the contradictions. Because you see, what, <laughs> what, what you see, Healing Wings is, is unlike, on, on, unlike other churches, okay? Because here we learn from one another. There is no head on to here. Hmm? So I had a problem, I brought it to you. Huh? Look, let me tell you what, 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 what was happening, okay? I might, I might think that I want to give a message on, on, on X thing, huh? okay? And, and work on it and prepare the message, etc. When the time is near to the time, God will just change everything. He will say, that's not the message I want you to give. This is the one I want you to give. Now, you then have to decide whether the one that you think you prepared is the one you're going to give or the one that you are not prepared for is the one you're going to give. And that's why I've come to tell you, in fact, I told you it last week. The last week, uh, the message that I preached last week, you know, on mercy, you know, rejoicing over judgment, came while listening to the prayers of Edward E. It was in the midnight prayer that God said, that is the message you are going to give. 
sometimes I wake up in the morning and it will tell me, this is the message you are going to give. And so you, you then have to decide whether you are going to give that message. Thank God. I decide. I give, I give the message. And you don't know. Sometimes I tell you. Huh? Maybe I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that in case <laughs> it doesn't go well, that you won't blame me. Or, huh? I tell you before, and I look, this message, you, look, this is how I received it. It was very late, so I'm so excited when it says rubbish. Huh? Because the message that you receive that way huh, is going to be delivered the way he wants it. And he will prepare minds to receive it because his strength is made perfect in weakness. And so, you know, once I went and I recite a particular message, and I told the Lord that, you know, this is the message that I want to preach. I had enough time. Huh? He didn't argue with me. I had enough time. I did all the studies. I did everything except put everything together, packaged everything, did everything, etc. And you know, when I delivered it, immediately I started delivering it because I'm very sensitive to God. You are my witnesses. I'm very sensitive in the spirit. Immediately I started delivering it. I saw that it was not working. It wasn't working. And that was how the message went. And so I came to you and I presented the problem to you. I said, you know, why is it? That I went and did all the study, all the research, all the bo -bo 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 on this message, and then it didn't work. And different people started teaching me. Huh? Different people from this on, in this Zoom message started instructing me. And I remember especially God will happen. Because I listen to what people say. And Godwin told me that, look. Because you thought that it is your preparation that is going to do this message. But we are. It's not going to happen. Huh? If the message is going to work, it is because it is the Lord's message. Hmm? He is going to give it to you. He is the one going to prepare it. They might tell you you are the oracle of God who is alive, but it is God that is going to speak, use your mouth to speak to people. And sometimes what in fact is going to use it. So, you know, sometimes I go back and play the tape of something that I have preached because I, I surprise myself a lot of the time. I say, I didn't even know I know that. I, I've written a book now and I'm trying to edit the book. And, you know, this is absolutely ridiculous because, you know, I mean, it's a compilation of different things I've written in the last 25 years. But a lot of the things that I'm reading, I'm thinking, God, God, I can learn a lot from reading from reading my writings. When did I know this? When did I write this? How did this happen? I did that even yesterday. I did, even this morning, this morning I woke up. Huh? God changed the title of one of the chapters of my book. I was telling my wife, I didn't know whether she was interested because she was part of, she was involved in that change. And when he changed the title, I decided to rewrite the beginning of that chapter. So I was not dealing with this message this morning. I wasn't dealing with this message. I was rewriting a chapter of a book that, was, that I had written, which I had changed, the title was changed to Jehovah Transportation. You understand? So we are not the one doing anything again. It is the Christ that is in us. God is not going to help us to do something. God is going to do something to us. And the question is, Will we allow him? Will we allow him? Let me give you a, a different example. Hmm? The Bible says that Jesus was walking on water. And when Peter saw him, Peter said, what? Is it you? It's me. He said, if it is you, tell me to come. And Jesus said, okay, come. And so Peter stepped out of the boat. Okay? and walked on water. But it was not Peter that was walking on water. God, it was not Peter. Huh? 
And then he saw the waves. When he saw the waves, Peter took over. He drowned. He was in the water. Huh? So look, understand this. So huh? number one, he said, ask me to come. And Jesus said, come. All right? Let him ask you. No, no, you don't have to take the initiative. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Peter, Peter is a wonderful, is a wonderful person. Okay. Look, let me let me let me, let me tell you what used to happen to me. Huh? I will read a scripture. Jesus will say, somebody slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek to him. I say, wow. Ah. Okay. Now I understand this. I understand this scripture. I understand this now. Somebody slaps me on the one cheek as you turn the other. So you know what you do after that? Then you start looking for somebody to slap you. Hmm? You're looking for somebody to slap you because you know that when they slap you, you will turn the other cheek. Okay? Because you have now learned it from the scripture. And Jesus said in John 7, 17, if you do, you will know. Okay? So, uh, when you wait for somebody to slap you, nobody is going to come and slap you. Uh, people will... You'll be waiting. Say, okay, maybe this man is going to slap me. Maybe this this this, this bus conductor. Maybe this they won't slap you. You know now. And then you know when you have you have forgotten, somebody will come out of the blue and give you one slap. When that person gives you that one slap, you will give him two back. Whoa, 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 whoa. And you will remember the scripture. Hmm? Oh, your shakara. You are just fooling yourself. You are just fooling yourself. Hmm? You are just fooling yourself. Peter said, all these ones, they don't love you. I'm the only one that loves you. Jesus said, you, <laughs> you will deny me three times before the cock will go. Huh? He thought he had arrived. And he was the only one. The one, the, the one person that thought he had arrived was the very person that denied Jesus three times. He was, he committed treasonable felony and conspiracy. <laughs> Let me use a, a terminology that I learned way back when, when they, when they charged the Willow with treasonable felony and conspiracy. He committed treason. Huh? But mercy rejoiced. Okay? Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Hmm? Take heed. It is Christ now that is at work in you and me. Let him do the work. He's the doer of the work. So I say again, when a believer does something right, it is Christ. When he does something wrong, it is sin. Where does that leave the believer himself? He's no longer a part of the equation. You and I no longer exist. The new creation is now a part of the body of Christ. Whatever he does, whatever you do, you do in the name of Jesus. And you give thanks to him for doing it. Uh, so let me put it in dramatic fashion. I, I picked this before if you were listening. If you give somebody who needs money, money, thank God for giving the money. Thank God, because you are not the one who gave the money. It is God. Remember, it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Say, God, I want to thank you that you helped this person. That's the one who gave the money. It came out of so-called salary, but your money doesn't belong to you any, anymore because if you are a disciple of Jesus, you forsake everything. Give him everything. Huh? That's why motivational preachers 
they are not of Christ. They are not of Christ. Because they tell you the lie that you can be better than you are. They tell you the lie that if you, you can improve yourself. They tell you the lie that if you apply this principle, if you apply this strategy, if you apply this method, and it's all rubbish. It's all rubbish. The flesh cannot do anything. It, you, you, you can be more studious, you can, but all you are achieving is abomination to God. Because that which the flesh achieves profits nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. And that spirit is Christ. That spirit is Jesus, the spirit that is in you. Huh? It's not there to enable you. It is there to do the work. You have to allow God to take over. He only wants to see Jesus. He doesn't want to see us. We no longer exist. So let me end by saying this. You are no longer who you are. Or you are no longer who you are. Your name is no longer Simon, son of Jonah. Your name is now Peter, son of God. When you get to heaven, God is going to give you a new name. upon the revelation that you are now Peter, upon the revelation of your new identity, God will build you up and the gate of hell cannot prevail. But if you are not standing on that revelation, huh, they're going to sin. The flesh is going to lead you astray. They're going to do things that you should not do. I'm going to say things that you should not say. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. We can only ask for help. Because we are fighting. The Bible says that the flesh wars against the spirit and the flesh against the, the spirit against the flesh. There is a battle. The battle of Armageddon is taking place right now, right now, between your ears and mine. There is a prophecy that has come forth. Heaven and earth can pass away, but that world will not pass away. That prophecy says, the older shall serve the younger. The old man of the flesh will serve the young man of the spirit. And so ask the Lord God Almighty, help me along that trajectory. Help me to walk along that path of life. Help me to walk in the spirit so I don't fulfill the loss of the flesh. Help me so I stop making provision for my flesh. Help me to understand that I am not a debtor to the flesh. The flesh just led me to sin. The flesh killed me. The flesh led me away from God. The flesh makes me do things that are objectionable to my heavenly father. But it is the spirit that rescued me. It is the spirit that brought me back to life. It is the spirit that quickened me, gave me new life, gave me new birth. And I'm asking for the enablement to allow the spirit to prevail. 
help me. Because really what we are required to do is to realize God. You are gods. We have to realize God. It's a fantastic, it is, it, is, it is one of the most amazing promises of God that we will be exactly like Jesus. Ah, ah. We will be exactly like him. No difference. Nothing. Huh? We will have his mind. We will have his heart. We will have his compassion. We will have his love. Oh, my goodness. This God is a, is a, is a wonderful father. Huh? Let's stop fighting him. Let's stop impeding him. Let's stop contradicting him. Hmm? Let us, let's stop seeking the glory that is rubbish, that is dunk. And let us allow God to be glorified in us. Let us allow God to showcase his glory in us. And then we will see that it would enable us to do marvelous things, wonderful things, glorious things. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I appreciate, I quite appreciate that uh, we have said a number of things that seem confusing, seem, you know. So if you have any questions, if you have any contributions, can I see your hand up? Let's talk. Yes, Mr. Obi. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, my own is just well, maybe a contribution. I thank God for the great message we have had. But the truth is also that we must come to him always, every time for enablement. Because from time to time, we drop out of it and enter into the flesh. I learned this lesson in a very hard way. I married my wife. And from before friends and people from time to time will boast and say, I can't beat my wife. For what reason? I said, I've never touched my wife. That was a common boast. I just kept saying it. I didn't know I was not the one. But one day, while we were driving back from, we went to somewhere, uh, Okota. I don't know what transpired between my wife and the wife of my friend that we visited. Apparently, my wife now felt that my friend appeared to be treating the, his own wife better from that discussion. So as we were coming back, let me not say a long story. The truth is that as we were coming back, I discovered that my wife sold a phone to somebody far, far more than what she bought it and kept worrying the young man to pay. When I came to know it, I was angry, and it was that day. And I told her, I said, why would you do this? Sir? The young man earns little or nothing. Why would you want to take this kind of money from, 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 from him? I got angry. Before I knew what was on my wife, I said, you that you make money, you hide it. This month, have you given me money? <laughs> what have you given me? <laughs> And I remember that I had given her money three times for feeding that month. She made that comment. It was so painful, I couldn't bear it. While in the car, before she knew it, I had slapped her three times with my backhand like this. <laughs> so she jumped down. 
already we had entered her estate. She jumped down out of a moving a moving car. And I was so so angry with her that I believed that what I did was right. Very shocked. She started calling all those people that knew me. And my brother, some pastors, even one of them came that night. I still felt I was right. It took a dream I had. That dream, I saw myself just like a wedding ceremony on a circular kind of table with others in the midst of that place. But over there, where I was, I farted. I knew I farted. But the smell was so much that even a lady sitting down, far away <laughs> from me, walked up from there to come up and say, you foolish man. Why did, you, why did you mess up the air in that dream? So I stood up. Everybody in that uh, that came in you know, for that wedding reception knew that I was the one that farted. <laughs> so I left. The quickly the dream now changed again. This time I was with my wife, and we entered into the into the hall, where the, where the, where the reception hall, and lo and behold, that lady that saw me in the other dream now saw me with my wife and said, Look at this foolish man. It was from that dream, and I came to know it was that thing I did. That was when I knelt down and said, God have mercy upon me. I can never boast in anything again. And you, are, you, are, you have turned me into a white beater because I kept boasting that I wouldn't beat my wife. So that humbled me. So flesh is something that from time to time, it takes us out and we're in it. But we must keep praying and say, God, help us. Help us. Let that scripture, let that thing that Paul said, let it be real in my life. Galatians 2.20. You know, when he says he has been crucified with Christ, it's no longer him that lives, but Christ lives in him. That should be our prayer and testimony. I want to thank you, doctor, for this message. Mr. Obi. God bless you. <clears throat> Mr. Obi, you have, not given, you have not given a message in uh, Healing Wings in a long time. What's happening? <laughs> you have been too busy. Well, these, these, these full gospel people, they are not the only, they are not only in full gospel, you are in healing wings now. <laughs> so so the, the problem is also they gave me a task that I don't know how to put it. I'm, I'm, I will say I'm the list of the national directors, but they gave me a job as if I'm the district coordinator with a convention. The work he's supposed to do, they, they, they now put him in CPC Abuja. You know, within the conventional planning committee. So the one is supposed to do in our district, he now said I'll be the one doing the coordinating all the convention committees. In fact, after this church service, I'll be in an online meeting also with all the convention committees. So he has been quite tasking, but uh, I'm willing to still serve. Now well, okay, time make, make, make time for us. So, so I, will, I will get back, I will get in touch with you. It's well, sir. Yes, thank God. Martins. Good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you so much for this message. Um, I've learned I've learned a lot today, and um, I have to also be very honest that that um, if not that the central themes of this this message. Um, of having no confidence in the flesh um, are still consistent with the foundational knowledge that I have in Christ. I, I would have said that my, I, I probably would have lost my faith today, <laughs> um, but it's, it's, I'll, I'll still have to admit that, that it, is, it is shaken a bit especially um, because of what seems to be contradictions um, about what we have come to know in, in scriptures. Um, for instance, 
what does it really mean when Jesus said that I have not come for the righteous, but um, I have come for for sinners um, to to seek repentance. So, so I, I, um, so, so, and, and, and then, of course, we also know that in the Old Testament, um, you, as you, are, as you mentioned in the message, there were people who Jesus Himself um, said that they, um, they were righteous, Noah, Abel, etc. So, so I, I honestly don't know what that means. I will, I will appreciate it if you can, if you can, if you can throw more light on that. Um, probably also need to have to go back and listen to this message again. And then, and then, um, why can we not confess that? Okay, if 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 Jesus says that, um, that if the Bible says that the the righteousness of of Christ is is ascribed to us. Um, so, so can we claim that? Can we confess that we are righteous as a result of that? Um, the 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 implication for me is that if I say that, um, if, if, if the Bible says that um, I should confess that I'm healed, now, uh, so uh, will I be able to confess as a result of this message? Will I be able to confess? That I'm healed, even when the symptoms in my body still say that I have that sickness. So I'm, I'm just dealing with this this this, this issue um, as, as, as I listen to, to the message. I'll appreciate it if if some if I actually need help, you know. Okay, this, this yeah. are, these are these are very important questions. Like I said I've picked this before. Okay, let me say a number of things. Number one, the um, the Old Testament ended in the book of Luke. So the gospels are actually still the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament. Huh? Okay. Because a New Testament does not come into force until the testator dies. If somebody gives you a will, the will does not come into effect while he is still alive. Okay? So, the righteousness, I say, follows a dispensation. There is a new heaven and a new earth that was established by Jesus Christ. And that new heaven and new earth belongs to those that are born of the spirit of God. So their righteousness is completely different from the righteousness that you have under the law, from the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, from the righteousness of Noah. That's why I gave simple examples of Noah. I said, you know, how righteous could Noah have been? How righteous can Lot have been given what they did? None of them were sinless, but they were righteous according to their dispensation. You can't judge them beyond the truths that were revealed to them. That's why before Moses, uh, the, 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 the scripture that said that, you know, I mean, uh, where there was no law, there was no sin. So if you don't have a certain law, people cannot break it. So it was Christ, you know, all the righteousness that Moses prescribed had to do with outward behavior. In the Ten Commandments, only one commandment dealt with the heart, covetousness. Thou shalt not covet. All the others had to do with outward behavior. Whereas, if you read the Beatitudes, which is basically Christ's description of where we are supposed to be, it's about the heart. But all the inklings about this, we find them, they have been, the psalmists have been talking about them, prophets have been talking about them. They are all there. But they only come into play with the new creation. Okay, now. So, we 
cannot say we are righteous. We can only say we are the righteousness, we have the righteousness of faith in Christ Jesus. Or we can say we are the righteousness of Christ. But the righteousness that we have now is not ours because we are still sinning. Now, John says that he who is born of God cannot sin. But we are still sinning. The scripture is not contradicted because the spiritual aspect of us that has been quickened, that has been brought alive, cannot sin. It doesn't have the seed of Adam in it. It doesn't have the seed of God in it, of man in it. It has the seed of God, and the seed of God cannot produce anything that will be sinful. But with the flesh, we never have to teach our children how to tell lies. They, 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 they tell lies naturally. They, they, they do bad things naturally. We have to teach them righteous things because the, the things that are natural to the flesh are the things that are contrary to God. So we are on the way to the promised land. And we are fighting the Jebusites and the, 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 all the ites, ites, ites on the way. Huh? But we are not there yet. We are not there yet. Now, it's, it, it's different from that which you presented, which is physical. We're talking about healing now. Okay? But there are basically two types of healing, spiritual healing, physical healing. The physical healing, you can tell that you're healed. You had a headache and you didn't have a headache again. You know that you're healed. But even then, it does not preclude you from having a headache again. You can get another headache tomorrow. You can heal you of malaria today and you get it again next week. Huh? The, the, the spiritual healing is the issue. Now, at the level of the spirit, we have been healed. But we are still carrying this flesh with us. So we will only realize the fullness of the healing, which we have already received. We're not going to, we're not going to receive it anew. We have already received we will only realize it when we have relinquished the flesh completely. There's no struggle anymore. Huh? There's no struggle anymore. And I was telling, I was telling people last week, I said, God did show, give, give me some experiments. He told me, he said, Femi, I want you to spend three days with me. In those three days, I don't want you to talk to anybody but me. Huh? Three days, no food, no water, just me. And when that happens, you are either praying, you are either praising, or you are reading the scriptures. Everything about you is God. Now, of course, my wife objected. Doesn't God know that you are married? You know, it's, 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 that is history now because we used to have those problems before, not anymore. Um, he knows that you're married, but it's going to it's going to separate you from your wife, from your husband, from your you know. I mean, he, he has come with a sword. Huh? So when you spend those three days, let me tell you what happens. Huh? You cannot sin. You're going to have a time period huh, when he will tell you. Whatever you tell me you want to do is going to be done. You don't doubt anything at all because the, the, the flesh has been completely subdued. Huh? And I understood that that was just telling me about the power of the spirit, telling me about what we have, but we are still, the flesh is still there. Because, you know, after three days, we're gonna start eating again. 
Start drinking again. You are going to start attending to the flesh again. And everything becomes displaced. Huh? I'm going to still now start to cry and maintain some equilibrium, but you cannot, you know, I mean, yes, you, you must always make sure that the spirit is in ascendancy over the flesh, but the flesh is always there. It's always fighting. It's always struggling. It's always there. But it is only there for a time period. Yes, if I leave uh, Martins, are you okay? Yes, thank you. Thank God. Valuable lesson. Hello, doctor. Yeah, doctor. I, it's interesting that you uh, give an expose right now because it's part of the question I was going to ask. Uh, my experience is that, of course, with some of the challenges that I have, uh, with uh, my state of uh, chemical balance, aside from that, my experience has been that in the spirit, sin does not exist. That is why yesterday I attended a seven day adventures for the first time on the invitation of a friend. And the guy asked, they gave me a card, and the prayer request I put there is that, that the Lord will help me to live in the spirit 24 7. Now, I know that I have another, I won't call it weakness, uh, willful sin, obviously, which is sexual in nature. And then you and I have had the argument that in this world, so to speak, we may never be perfect because we still carry the body of, of the flesh. So how do we deal with the issue of willful sin, sin of provision? What when you know that what you are doing is unlawful, yet you go ahead to do it. Where is the place of sin in all of this? The place of sin in all of this is for you to walk in the spirit. That means that you are not fed. Uh, that means that your flesh still is the yoga. Your flesh, you have to make sure your flesh knows there's a new sheriff in town. And that sheriff is your spirit. And you know that by being fed. Number one, eat the word on a regular, systematic basis. Because, if you don't eat food, after some days, you will not even be able to walk. Hmm? Because your flesh has to eat food to survive. If you, if you don't eat the word, your spirit is going to go into kwashoko. So if you have to make sure your spirit is fed because it is your spirit man that is going to rule over your flesh. So if your spirit man is fed, is, 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 is fed, you will not be susceptible or you will not be subject to what you call willful sin. You're not going to do it. Because your spirit man will keep you from the works of the flesh. Okay? Uh, anybody else? Okay, please, Dr. Bada. Good morning. Uh, morning, sir. Please. There are two or three things uh, that you are going to help us to do today. Number one, I understand that Omoni, one of us just had a baby. Okay. So we need to we need to really thank God uh, because you know I mean um, childbirth. I mean you are a doctor, so you know childbirth is not an easy is not an easy matter. Number two. I can see Celestina Ivanova on the screen. She's yes, one of us. Yes, doctor, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, doctor. I just came from church and I saw the invitation. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God, let me join immediately. <laughs> How is your baby? Oh, he's fine, thank God, he's okay. fine. So, so, so Ladi, please, 
they are going to help pray for for Celestina. She's 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 joining us for Bulgaria. We might not see her for another length of time, but you know she we, we must, must go to <laughs> so please, they are going to help pray pray for her. And then, uh, like it, yeah, then you are going to pray for us. <laughs> and God will help all of us uh, to, 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 to walk in the spirit. Amen. That's right. So, um, I think you will take each prayer individually or just kind of run for one second. It's up to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Father, our God, we thank you once again for today. We thank you for the opportunity to come and learn at your feet. We thank you because today, truly, you have fed us. Truly, today, you have made it possible for us to hear from you. And we know it is from you we have heard. And because we have heard from you, we also know with certainty that you are here. And because we know we are here, we can make a question to you and we know you will answer. Your word has told us clearly that sometimes we do not receive because we do not ask. But today, we ask of you. We shall make our request known to you. But in doing so, first of all, we would like to thank you for the things you have done in our life. We want to show you gratitude for our money. We want to show you gratitude for the baby that has just been used as a blessing to that family. We say thank you for conception we say thank you for safe delivery and as we say thank you father Lord, for what you have done already we're going to say thank you for what you shall do concerning the life of that child we declare lord almighty for you said children indeed are your heritage we declare that concerning this child this child shall be for signs and for wonders in the name of jesus Amen. we declare that concerning this child lord you alone shall be the father of this child we declare that concerning this child, Lord Almighty, this child shall be heard and shall never be told. Amen. We say concerning this child, Lord, this child shall be trained by you all the days of his or her life. We declare that concerning this child, Lord, you shall give your angels charge over every single thing to do with this child. No weapon formed or fashioned against this child shall prosper. Amen. It shall be well with this child. This child shall be a reason for testimony all the days of his or her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, as we thank you for this child, as the parents thank you for this child, there will never be any time in their life that they will stop thanking you for this child or to do otherwise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Father, Lord. And we lift your daughter Celestina before you. We lift her before you because it is you that ordain and order the steps of the righteous. There are so many times that I've been personally on this service that she has not been there. But you have ordained that you have ordered her steps to the Lord. It is for a reason. It is for her to hear your word. It is for her to receive a prayer concerning her. We say, Lord, you are no know exactly why you have brought her here today. That which you have planned for her, Father, Lord, manifested in her life in the name of Jesus. That which you have declared must be done in our life. Father, Lord, let no obstacle be there to stop it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare the Lord concerning your daughter. Yes, I've not heard. It has not been said in the mouth or the voice of people. But you know it, Lord, that exceeding abundantly about what she imagined, what she thought, that will you do in our life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We declare that Lord concerning your daughter Celestina, Father Lord, you will make a life, you will make her life a testimony in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every single stronghold, Father Lord, you will release it for her today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every single mountain before her today, you will make into a valley in the name of Jesus. Concerning your daughter, Lord Almighty, Celestina, Lord, we declare that Lord, you will come to her aid in every single area of her health. Where she needs healing, you give her healing and you make her own. Where she needs, where she needs a way, you shine a path in her path. You shine a light in her path. Father Lord, where she needs favor, you surrender with favor as with a shield. You will make a way for her when there seems to be no way. Father Lord, the blessing, the blessing, Lord Almighty, as you gave unto the disciples who went fishing and they could not contain. 
Father, Lord, such a blessing you grant your, da your daughter Celestina today in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why is it because she does not know simply because she is your child? Simply because she's here today in the midst of your other children. And you have asked that she should separate from. Father Lord, do that new thing in her life in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Blessed be your holy name. And we lift your church before you. We lift your people before you. We are like sheep. All of us have gone astray. But here we are, Lord. Though we have gone astray, we have come to you again. We have come to you because we think it is us that came to you, but it is you that has actually drawn us onto you. We have come thinking today we were just here by accident, by coincidence, but it is you that has drawn each and every single one of us onto you today, Lord. The purpose you have drawn us, you alone, Father Lord, let it come to pass in our life in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, even as you have fed us today, as you have fed us today with deep words, Father Lord, may the birds of the air not seal that which you have given to us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare that, Lord Almighty, some were giving seed, some were giving all manners of enablement to make those seed grow, and some became multiple fold, tenfold, thirtyfold, hundredfold, and some were still taken away. We declare, Lord, concerning you and concerning the word you have given us today, it shall generate a hundredfold in our lives in the name of Jesus. Much more than we think it will do for us in the name of Jesus. The knowledge of you, Father, is far, far, far more important than gold. And today, Lord, you have given to us the knowledge of you. You have shown us a way that we never knew before. You've taken away guilt. You have put in us hope. Father, Lord, let your hope manifest in our life in the name of Jesus. We declare that, Lord Almighty, concerning each and every single person here, we see at this service, who is represented and represent each and every single family member there. My Lord, my God, you will touch us like only you alone can. With this word, God Almighty, I declare that each and every single person here, Lord, has touched the hem of your garment. And by touching the hem of your garment, we declare, Lord, Lord Almighty, virtue. Virtue shall flow from you into each and every single family here in the name of Jesus. You will bring healing, not into our lives only, Father. You will bring healing into our family. Spiritual healing, Father. Physical healing, Lord. Mental healing, Lord. But Father, Lord, where there is discord, um, discord amongst your people, in their family, in their lives, Father, Lord, you will soothe it today with the palm of Gilead. Father, Lord, we declare that you alone are God, and as you have fed us today, you continue to do the Lord. We bless you, Holy Father. We thank you for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, it's time for, for prayer requests or testimonies. I, 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 I'm getting worried with people in Healing Wings. Don't, don't give testimonies. Huh? I mean, God must be doing wonderful things. Why, 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 you know, a lot of the time I ask for testimonies and I don't see any hands up. Celestina, you must have a testimony. Huh? Because... Uh, I have a testimony. You were pregnant. You had COVID. I mean, we were praying for you seriously here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning. Uh, uh, yeah, it's good morning there. It's afternoon here anyway. So good, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm so happy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to give this testimony earlier, but I'm glad that God has given me the opportunity today. And... Um, so I'll start, uh, most of you are aware of uh, the case, uh, how I got pregnant and at the same time I got a job and the pressure of the job and the pregnancy because most companies do not um, employ pregnant women. Uh, but uh, the, the, there was something, the fact was that I didn't even know I was pregnant when I, when I got the job. So it was uh, two months, uh, the, the, I was already pregnant for two months. There was no sign, nothing. And uh, Everything was normal. I took the job and I was already on going to the, th the third month. And it was also during the COVID season. I got COVID. My husband was also telling me that uh, I would lose the job. I should better abort because here it's very, le it's legal to abort a child. It's like uh, just going to the market to buy rice and beans. So, you know, <laughs> anybody can go for abortion here. So <laughs> I told him, I said, I'd rather, I'd rather lose the job and uh, 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 then I bought the child. So I decided to keep the child and I, and I went to work, to, to work. I told my, the HR members that um, 
that's after praying actually. And you all were also praying for me at the same time. I told them, uh, well, I found out that I was pregnant. I didn't know. It's not like I wanted to deceive them or anything, but I would await whatever uh, decision the higher ups make. And I was waiting after telling them that I was waiting. Nobody told me anything. And uh, <laughs> also during the, the same time while I, we were waiting, uh, I was waiting for the, the decision. I got some. Um, I had to go for uh, what we call, um, it's a kind of a scan, a fetal morphology. It's like a 5D scan where you see every part of the baby, you see the fingers to make sure they are not six fingers or seven fingers, but five. Uh, and also you make sure that all the organs in the baby's body is complete, like the heart, the liver or kidney or something. And if everything is there or if something is missing, you're advised to abort the baby. If the baby is going to have Down syndrome, you're, you, you're going to see it in the scan and everything. You're advised to have a, an abortion as well. So uh, the first uh, fetal morphology I attended, I found out, they found out that my baby had no uh, gallbladder and no kidney. And I was advised to abort the child. I said, I'm not aborting my child because I have two kids already before this one. And God did not forget to put the kidney and gallbladder there. So I don't think he has forgotten actually to put the kidney and gallbladder in this one. So and the sa at the same time, I had a dream telling me some uh, one devil telling himself that uh, I was not going to have the baby. Unfortunately for the devil, I have the baby now and the baby is a year and five months already. So, OK, back to uh, the where I was. So uh, waiting for my office to make the decision, they never made any decision. And finally, I got into labor. I went for my normal, everything was normal. I, I kept my job, actually God kept my job for me. And uh, the, the, I was advised also by the doctor to go for a second scan to, be, to ensure that I, my baby has the kidney and the gallbladder. I told my husband I wasn't going for it. So it was a huge pressure from his fam his entire family, everybody pressurizing me. I wouldn't lie to you brothers and sisters, I have, a very strong faith in God, but with some, I was standing alone. It's like one man standing, you know, every other person was advising me to abort the child that I can't give birth to a child without kidney and, and uh, gallbladder. You know, at a time I fought my, my fate, I fought hard, just a tiny little bit. And then I knew that this was, I, you know, uh, that's, that's, that voice, sometimes that tiny voice from the devil can actually make you do something that you're not, you, you really never wanted to do, you know? And uh, that voice told me, what if really this child comes with it? What if God decided just, what if after all, children are born with Down syndrome, children are born with other problems, don't you know? So what, what if this child comes without these things, actually? You're going to actually lose the child as soon as you put, oh my God. When I thought about it, I decided to clear my head. No, 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 that's not my God, you know? And um, I prayed, I told God, I said, God, you have put everything in my first and second child. This is the third child. If there is anything that you have missed out, if really the gallbladder and kidney is not in this child, please put it before I give birth. And that was it. I went on my maternity leave. I submitted my maternity leave form to my office. They took everything, told me congratulations. You know, I, I didn't lose the job anyway. So when it was time for labor, um, I went to the hospital and uh, I started, uh, the labor started. And when the baby was about seven to eight centimeters, you know what happened? The baby turned. So he was in a transverse position. <laughs> he was in a transverse position. And the doctor said, Celestina, you can't give birth naturally to this baby because the first and second are natural. And this the third one was also normal to be natural. I started already eight centimeters, the baby turned. You can imagine turning, they couldn't find the head of the baby anymore. Everything was normal. And then the head of the baby just turned and the baby was lying in a transverse position. That means like a horizontal position, you know? So the head went to the side and the leg went to the side. <laughs> so there was no way. And then I started singing. <laughs> I started singing, they were watching, you know, you both people now, when they start, when an African woman starts singing in the labor room. <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> I started singing and worshiping God and I didn't even listen to them anymore. They brought all the, they said, so not, you have to sign, you have to sign. We have to do an operation to get your baby out and all that. I said, hold on, if I'm going to do an operation, I will tell you. If not, I, I would give it, deliver this baby the way I should. So I will be the one to tell you if I'm going to go for an operation. So I started singing and after I prayed and I, ha I heard the voice, actually, God was like, let them take the baby out now, you know. So I called the doctor. I said, OK, I'm ready. Bring the forms. I signed everything. And uh, my baby was uh, delivered through uh, the cesarean operation uh, surgery. So uh, at the end of the day, I woke up and met a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> and uh, usually when the baby is born here, he has to go through the same fetal morphology again. And guess what? His kidney and his gallbladder were present. <laughs> <laughs> a year later, I returned to my job, so I didn't lose my job. I have the baby, I have the job, I have everything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's my testimony. <laughs> and it's all thanks to you guys for your prayer, for all to all of you for your prayers, for your what intercession. Oh, and COVID as well. I found out they actually found out that. Um, it wasn't COVID, but it was a kind of, um, I don't know, vi viral infection or something like that. I don't know which they were already sure was going to take the life of my baby. <laughs> but, you know, here, every little thing is like a threat to them. And um, it's a good thing that I actually have, um, I actually have um, a stronghold, you know, a pillar that I can hold on to. I can look up to that pillar. I can hold on to my stronghold, the Jehovah Rapha himself. And uh, at the end of the day, I gave the baby a very special name. It's um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, from Elizabeth's place. Uh, <laughs> it's the baby is called Akumesha, but the full name is called Akumesha Mbabe. That means the God of the heavenly host has conquered again. I don't know those who are from Elizabeth's place. Uh, from um, uh, was it? For this bit, where is she from again? Yes, so yes, so I gave the Akumesha Humbabe. That means the Lord God of heavenly of the heavenly armies has conquered again. You know, so that's the name of my baby. So you can call my baby Akumesha or Aku. I call you know. So, and his English name is Nathan or Nathanel. That means the gift of God from the prophet Nathan, as well. <laughs> So that's God. my testimony. Thank, Thank God. God. And Thank praise God. be to God. Yes. Okutamuna Belematua. Uh, yes, I'm in a ride right now, leaving Brother Chibuzo because Sister Rolly had to travel. I wanted to keep him company. I was his priest, priest Sister Appa yesterday, Israel and uh, Chuchu. In the car I'm driving, the gentleman, his name is Alfred, just shared a testimony that I think I want to share with the body of Christ. He said he had had no job for six months. So on this particular time, the Lord prompted him to put up a prayer. So he prayed to the Lord. And then one way or the other, he got a call from a friend. When he went to the prayer he prayed, I'm sorry, I'm smoking. The prayer he prayed was a prayer that God will provide a vehicle for him that he can use to do an Uber. So his friend gets him. And as he went to the place that he went in, this was after he made the prayer out. As he got to the place, immediately the man told him, are you ready for work? He said, yes. That was how he got a car. I'm in the car right now going to Aja. From there, I'm going to mainland. That's how he got the car, which he's using for business. And that is how the Lord answered his prayer after six months. Old. So I wanted to share that. I wanted to share that testimony. He's driving, actually. Glory be to God. Okay, thank God. <laughs> thank God for that. Yes, He always do. He always does wondrous things, uh, and He's never He's never late. He's never early. Six months is the right time for Him to get that. Thing. On this, on the point, and this young man has a good heart. Uh, somebody forgot iPhone 11 in his car. He had to go and look for the person to give back that iPhone 11 to. Eventually, he ended up with an extra 10,000 naira that was given to him for him for the good work he has done. So I would like us to raise Alfred to the Lord that God will protect him in this job he's doing. And by the grace of God, he will own his own car. 
and then his wife is a wonderful woman too. They are, they are praying, they are believing the Lord for a baby boy. So I want us to pray for him as well. Thank you. Okay, thank God. Is Pentola here? Daddy is missing by here. You see, but she has a she has a cold, so her voice is not the one that you want to hear. I assure you. <laughs> okay, then uh, let 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 land it. She has a what? It's so true. Okay. So her voice sounds uh, very funny. No, 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 no problem. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Omoba. Good morning, sir, and good morning, um, brothers and sisters. Before yes, we yeah. Yeah, before we end the service, before we end the service, I just want us to pray for one minute. I want us to commit everyone in the fellowship into the hands of the Lord. We want to pray against any accidents. So whether any one of us on Okada, whether we're in a Danfo, whether we're in a taxi, whether we're in our private vehicles, whether we're in the air, whether we're on the train. We're going to raise our voices to ask God that we cover every member of the church, of the fellowship into his hands. And by extension, we commit their, our families as well. That any plan of the devil to cause any accidents, any plans of the devil to cause us to weep. I heard Dr. Femi say that we don't give testimonies. Look, that we go in and come back home every day on scale without any issues is a testimony in itself. Because some people go out, they're just crossing the road and something happens, but God preserves us every second of the day. So I just want us to pray that any plan, any spirit of, of death, any accident that is hovering around, it will not touch any one of us. That as we go about this week, God will protect us. And that come Sunday, we will hear many testimonies. Can we just pray very quickly, please? Mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I commit everyone into your hands. Oh, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for today's testimony. Father, please, may we always remember that anything that we have, anything that we do, any um, uh, um, wisdom, any decision that we take, that is only because you have allowed us to. And it is because of your spirit that gives us wisdom. It is because of your grace, it is because of your mercy. Father, help us to walk in your ways, O oh Lord. Father, help us to walk on that righteous path. Father, help us to remember whose child we are, O oh Lord. Father, let our lives be a living testimony, O oh Lord. Father, help us so that we do not get carried away and boast as if we have any power of ours. Father, help us, O oh Lord, so that we do not think that we have principles that are bigger than your word. Father, help us to understand and help us to appreciate the fact that we do not have any strength, save for the strength that you give to us. Oh Lord God Almighty, I commit every single member of the fellowship into your hands. Father, I come against every spirit of accident. Lord, I come against every attack. I come against everything, Lord God Almighty, that will cause us anguish or cause us tears or cause us sadness. Lord God Almighty, as we go into the second half of this year, Lord, I cover every member of this fellowship with your blood, Lord Jesus. My Father, my God, I ask, and by extension, I cover our spouses, I cover our children, I cover our parents, I cover our siblings, oh Lord God Almighty. 
that the covenant that you have made with us, when you have said you will preserve us and you will keep us, Lord, I say that it extends to every member of our family in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, because of us, you will keep the roads safe, O oh Lord. Because of us, you will keep the air safe, O oh Lord. Because of us, you will keep the seas safe, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. My Father and my God, I say there will be no harm that will befall any member of this fellowship. Anybody that can hear my voice, Lord God Almighty, we say that we are protected. We say that you who have kept us, you will not allow a single single strand of head of heart of ours fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. Lord, I commit everybody here asking for something. Lord, I ask that you meet us at our point of need. Lord, I know that there are some who are waiting. They've been in the waiting room for a long time. Lord God Almighty, I commit them into your hands. Father, I ask that you speak to us, O oh Lord. Father, what is it that we're doing wrong? Are we in the wrong waiting room, O oh Lord? Are you asking us for that thing which you do not want to give us because you know it will destroy us or destroy our relationship with you? Father, help us to pray right, O oh Lord. Father, help us to ask for those things that will dignify our work with you. Father, help us to ask for those things that will keep us righteous. My Father, my God, ask, help us to ask for those things that you want for us, O oh Lord. Father, help us so that we stay focused. Help us so that we are not frustrated and we begin to seek for help elsewhere. Anywhere where help is not, or even where the help comes is from the devil. Lord, keep us away from options that do not have you. My Father, my God, you are our option one, option two, option three. Father, help us to understand that. Father, I ask for strength. I ask for courage for everyone here, oh Lord. My Father, my God, I ask that everybody here will have the courage to remain steadfast. Lord, I ask that everybody here will have the patience to wait on you, Lord. Father, I ask that everybody here will have the strength to remain faithful. I ask, oh Lord, that everybody here will have the strength to continue to praise you once you are ready to answer. Father, wipe away our tears and replace the tears with joy. Replace the tears with happiness. Replace the tears with contentment oh lord father multiply the fish and bread that we have father so that it will be more than enough for us oh lord father i ask for peace i ask for peace 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 in our homes oh lord father i ask that husbands and wives will be happy that they will understand each other that they will speak one language in love father please remove frustration remove anger lord i pray for all those who have who have one difficulty with their in-laws oh lord Father, I ask for your mercy and I ask for your peace for all those who are in court fighting one battle or the other. Father, I ask for, for, for your grace for all those who have received bad news, who don't have jobs, whose, whose books don't balance. Father, I ask for your peace, especially this week. Lord God Almighty, help us so that we do not offend or grieve your spirit, O oh Lord. That is the worst thing we can do. Father, help us, O oh Lord, so that we do not offend you. Father, help us guide and guard our utterances, O oh Lord, and our thoughts. Father, I ask for your spirit of confidence, O oh Lord, that every one of us here, Lord, we will not be moved by what we see. But that confidence that we need will help us to soar and help us to, to rise, O oh Lord, above all that we see. Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you. We commit our children into your hands, O oh Lord. Father, we go out to seek our daily bread. Sometimes we don't know what they get up to. Father, protect our children. Protect our children, O oh Lord. Father, keep them. Keep them, O oh Lord. Keep them away from evil, physical or virtual, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. And Lord, we will open up our mouths and we will speak of the goodness, of your goodness in our lives, O oh Lord. That we will open up our mouths and we will speak about your testimonies. Because, Lord, that we wake up in the morning is a testimony. Father, we just want to thank you. We exalt you and we adore you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a blessed week that you gave us last week and for a blessed week that is coming this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pray to the right place. We are the apple of God's eye. In Jesus' mighty name. You are the apples of God's eyes. Amen. 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 God bless us. God bless us. will not sing. That the apples of God's eyes. That the apples of God's eyes. Manuel. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Gucci. Yeah, bro, brother. I love my I love my I 